Family, we are coming to an end of Vlogmas. We are three days away from the end. Stay tuned for the question of the day. All right, family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. I'm so glad that you guys have stuck around. If this is your very first time coming, there is a playlist. I have done a question and answer form of 31 videos, and that is down in the description box below. So go ahead and check out that playlist. Now, the question of the day is, what are some do's and don'ts of dating? And I will just absolutely say that this is in relationships in general, the, the, the do's and don'ts of the list that I have for each. I have um, a lot more. Let me see. I have a lot more do's than I have don'ts. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and jump into the list because I have several of them. And seriously, I'd be trying to cut my videos down. But it's just so much information I need to get out there. So without further ado, we're going to do the do's list First, the first thing is to ask a multitude of questions. I don't know how many times I have to say that, but we have to get better at screening our potential partners so we can get closer to that till death do you part. And of course, to decrease the divorce rate, ask a multitude of questions. The next thing is to make sure that you are speaking about your fears. Do that. Do that. Speak about your fears. It's okay. It's healthy. You actually, the more you, I, I actually, actually something that I read recently, the more you speak about your fears, the less power that you give to that specific fear just by saying it out loud. Forget the fact that that's, uh, or I should say, that's not even taking into account you actually doing something about that particular fear, but just the mere fact of you speaking out loud about your fears, you actually give that particular fear less power. And I think that that's actually powerful. Just, just saying it, just saying it, say it more often. Let your spouse know about your fears. Third thing is to go ahead and to do be vulnerable. Be vulnerable with your, with your spouse. And especially while you're in the dating phase, you might um, have to start um, basically pick a story or two especially while you're dating and you can you can regurgitate this same story because you're saying it to different people while you're in the dating phase but one or two things that you absolutely can be vulnerable about vulnerable about and it doesn't even um, phase you the next time that you have to tell the story because the more times you talk about something that you're being vulnerable about vulnerable I can't even what really I can't even speak the more you talk about something that is um, making you vulnerable the less power that you give to that very thing. That's just like um, speaking about your fears. It's the exact same thing. So be vulnerable. The next thing is to make sure that you guys are qualifying your mates. And this includes all of the asking of the questions. You want to start to do things together where you guys have to work together just to see how they're going to actually work with you. Are they going to be angry all the time? Uh, th this is... is like, say, for instance, you guys go ahead and buy something for your place, uh, whether it's you guys are about to move in or if you're buying something for your place and then you're asking them to come over for them to help you put it together. See if they are super angry. See if you guys can actually laugh and joke about some of these things. Obviously, you want to put... This one is kind of tricky, but you do want to kind of put your potential in um, situations that you wouldn't necessarily be comfortable in and... And put them in those situations just to see how they would react. I actually seen this uh, <laughs> show. I can't even remember the show right now. But I remember basically they were putting their um, potential mates in these awkward or compromising um, situations. And so what they did is that they set up several dates. And they had the waiter or waitress, whoever was serving them, to come and purposely spill some um, food on the woman just to see how she would react. And I'm not saying that you have to do something as uh, <laughs> egregious as that. However, I am saying put your potential in these uncom uh, uncomfortable positions at times just to see the real character the real person you want to see actually how they would react to situations versus them always giving you the facade because when you're first meeting somebody it's their representative i actually have a video wow i got a video about a lot of stuff 
Anywho, um, I actually have a video about that. You can check that out. Of course, I'll put that up here somewhere. The next thing that you want to do, you do want to watch the person's actions. Absolutely. You want to see if what is coming out of their mouth actually matches their actions. So they, for example, they say that they're actually going to do something. Just see if they're actually going to do it. They say that they're actually going to pick you up or call you at a specific date and time, and then just see if they're going to do it. And obviously if they have a lot more things that they are not doing versus the things that are coming out their mouth, they are probably not the most reliable person. And you're probably going to be more than likely uh, disappointed more than you are going to be happy because their word means nothing. Uh, so do listen to what's not being said. I actually talked about this a little bit yesterday in the video about us not listening or not hearing what the guy uh, actually is saying or reading between the lines or however I worded it. But anyway, the point is we have to listen to what is not being said. The next thing is to do <laughs> compliment your mate often, even in the new dating phases. I'm not saying that you have to be fake about it, but if, if, if you love the cologne that he's wearing, just let him know. If you love the shoes that she, that she has on, let her know. If you love her dress, let her know. If you love her hair, let her know. If you love the ring that he has on, obviously not on this finger, but if you, <laughs> right, right, we, we ain't doing that. Anyway, so, but, but just make sure that you go ahead and give uh, compliments to your boo your new dating person, or somebody that you're actually in a relationship with, give those compliments. The next do on the list is to make sure that you are speaking to them with love and respect. See, I firmly believe that you can absolutely get anything off of your chest, anything off of your chest. It's all about your delivery. If you come into me like a pit bull, trust and believe you're getting put pit bull back. If you come to me like, listen, hey baby, you know what? X, Y, and Z is occurring. I don't like it. And these are the reasons why I don't like it. Can you kind of tighten up on that? I could take that a lot better. You still getting your point across. I could take that a lot better than you come to me like a pit bull. Because I ain't listening to nothing that you're saying. And trust and believe the other person that's on the receiving end is not listening to what you're saying. All that yelling and stuff, yelling and cursing and calling, name calling, all that stuff, that stuff don't work. It actually makes the person... Uh, uh, respect you so much less. Definitely not thinking about making you their long-term partner if this is what they got to come home to. We ain't got to deal with that nowadays. So they not. Anywho, do respect your uh, uh, new partner or boo. Show them love and respect when you're talking to them. Next thing on the do list is to make sure that you are telling your new guy or new girl how you actually want to be treated. Don't let them guess at this because most of the time, none of us are mind readers. We're going to guess wrong. Even if we're in the ballpark, they might be like, oh, you know, that's cool. But if you share exactly what you like, what you need, what you want, what you expect, then they know your blueprint. Then they can give you what you want. Then they can win with you. The next thing to do is to make sure that you guys are praying together. Now, this obviously depends on where you guys are at in your relationship. However, prayer together is so essential. You, it'll put you guys at ease. It'll put you guys on the same page. You will feel good about being in a relationship where God is at the head and then you guys are following behind God. Now, you can insert whatever word that you want to put there for God, but for me, it's God. So pray together. That'll absolutely settle down so many of the unnecessary arguments and all of the stress. Like some of the things like that, that we're personally stressing about has nothing to do with our partner. We're stressing about it, but we take that out on our partner. Praying about things can actually put you in a zen-like um, area where everything is basically has, uh, um, it's under control now. It's under control. You have lifted the weight off of your shoulders. Next do is to do inform your person about your standards. Do not wait and try to insert them after years and years. You want to put your standards out there ASAP. That way you know if they don't meet your standards, that's okay. You ain't knocking them, but that person ain't for you. That way, the six months in, a year in, you're not trying to insert this, insert that, insert this. All of a sudden, they're going to be like, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You trying to do too much. 
So the sooner that you put your standards out there, the better. And if that person is not somebody that can meet your standards, then you're not wasting a whole lot of time. And that's the key because a lot of us waste a whole lot of time by not putting our standards out there. And because we think for some reason that the other person is just supposed to know. That's not the way that it works because the, the person that you dated before and the person that you dated before them, everybody was different. And so because of that, the new person is probably different as well. They don't know what you like. They don't know what you need. They don't know what you want. So that portion of dating will have to be repeated multiple times until you find your one. Put your standards out there. You'll have better success in your relationships. And then you will also have better success with not wasting time. Do put your standards out there. The final do that I am going to absolutely say is that um, this is actually one that is for more mature relationships. But if you guys need counseling, then seek it. Do not make it seem like counseling or coaching or therapy or whatever word you want to insert there. Talk to your pastor, talk to your priest, etc. Go ahead and get some help from some outside forces who can actually hear and see exactly what's going on in your relationship. Because most of the time what, what, what people fight about is not necessarily what needs to be tackled in the relationship. Because they're dealing with something right now. And usually the, the things that are occurring in the relationship that's helping to break it down is something that is like the buildup. So it might even be something that has to do with um, the foundational breakdown. But the point is, seek counseling if you need counseling. Don't make it look like it's a stigmatism on you or, you know, you can't get it together because sometimes you just don't know where to go. The thing has gone down so bad that you don't know how to fix it. So get some, some outside help from somebody who can actually help you, somebody who, who, who is not taking either one of your sides. All right, those were the do's. Now let's get to the don'ts. The first don't is do not assume anything. Ask a multitude of questions, which I already said, but don't assume anything because as soon as you start assuming something, you're going to get it wrong. And then <laughs> you go, what they always say, <laughs> just don't assume. I'm not even going to say what they say. Just don't assume. Don't put yourselves in that situation because none of us are mind readers. Do not assume. Don't stay just because you have children. Yes, I had to do that the whole time because so many of us get caught up in the situation of, well, I got to stay because we have kids together. And then you in this horrible relationship. Do not stay because of the kids. I get it. We like the two parent home. However, if you talk to kids, if you talk to adult children, just period. They would rather see both of y'all happy away from each other than staying just because you want the two-parent home. But children see everything. We don't give children enough credit. They see everything. They notice everything. They notice when you're sad. They notice that whenever the partner comes home, how you now get quiet. When you used to be this super bubbly person before the partner came home, you running around and playing with the kids, and now all of a sudden you all meek and head down. Don't stay because of the kids. Literally, I have some, I'm just, I'm not, I don't want to tell all of this. I'll just say that I have somebody that I know personally. She went to her child and was like, you know what? Me and dad is, we, 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 we need to get away from each other. And the child basically said, it's about time. Trust me, your kids paying attention. Like, why haven't you left years ago? I'm talking about like the child was like, listen, yeah, do that. Do that. Don't get pregnant on purpose. Don't do that. Do not do that because you can end up in a situation like I just explained, staying for the child, or you can end up rearing this child by yourself because you got pregnant on purpose. You knew old boy did not want children, and now he looking like the scumbag of the earth because he didn't walk away. Don't get pregnant on purpose. Don't do that to yourself. I don't know if they're still doing this where they're poking um, holes in condoms and stuff or lying about birth control. I'm on birth control. I'm on birth control. No, you ain't on birth control. God, just, oh, you set yourself up for so much heartache and pain for no reason. Obviously, this is specific to the woman. Don't do that, though. Don't do that. Your time will come. 
Take me as, as an example. I didn't get pregnant until I was 38. I just had my first baby. I've been wanting kids since as y'all know me. As long as I can remember. I just got blessed with my baby. She just turned a year old. Don't get pregnant on purpose. Don't do that to yourself and the child. Because it really ain't about you. Once you, once you. once you have a family, it really ain't about you. It's about that child. Don't do that to that child. Because you being selfish. This ain't that video. I'm going to move on. But that one, that one, that one's close to the heart. Moving on. Don't only listen to what's being said. Actually, on the do list, I already said listen to what's not being said. So on the don'ts list, don't listen to only what the person is saying to you. You got to read between the lines of what they're saying because most of us, even though we are direct and straightforward with everybody else, usually with your spouse or somebody that you're dating or something, we beat around the bush. And usually it's because we just don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. So you have to pay attention to what's not being said. Don't only pay attention to what's being said. Next thing is don't say I love you to the person if you don't mean that. If, if somebody in the relationship is saying, I love you, but you're not there yet, don't say it back. You know what you can say? You know what? I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm actually inching toward that way, but I'm just not there yet. That, that's actually, that's a respectable thing to do. It's not something that the other person necessarily wants to hear, but I would rather hear that. I could respect you that much more if you tell me that versus you just saying, I love you back and knowing good and doggone well, you, you don't love nothing about me. Nothing. Don't do that. If you don't love the person, don't say the words. If you're still enjoying their company, you can let them know. I'm enjoying the company. I'm enjoying getting to know you. I am actually enjoying all of this. But as far as the love word, I'm just not there yet. It's okay to say that. It can be hurtful, but it's okay to say that. You'll get much more respect and the person will actually fall for you more by you saying that. I know this personal experience. Personal experience on this one. I know this one. Sis, another one for you. Don't think that he just supposed to know what you thinking, what you need, what you want. He's supposed to just know. That ain't the way it work. <laughs> if you think that's the way it work, that ain't the way it work. He, you have to give him the blueprint. You got to let him know how you want to be treated. You got to let him know how he can win with you. You got to let him know how he can make you happy. He ain't no mind reader. I hear that a lot. He's supposed to just know. No, 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 no. Because all of us are different. What made you happy? He might be doing everything that he feels is right because this is all the stuff that made the ex happy. And now you like, oh, well, why are we doing that? Or what kind of gift is this? Like he, he, he was feeling like the man with her and now he feeling like anytime you come around. Because he don't know, he don't know, he don't know your blueprint. He don't know how to win with you. He do not just know. You got to tell him. The final don't is... Sis, bruh, you cannot get mad at your partner if you have not shared why you have gotten mad. So say like they continuously doing this thing that just pisses you off. But you don't open up your mouth and share that with them. So every time they do this thing to you, you pissed off internally. You just shut down. You don't want to talk about it. But, but they ain't no, again, they ain't no mind reader. You got to share the things that tick you off. That's the only way they can correct the behavior. I remember when me and my, my fiance first started dating, there was two things that I consistently did to him that annoyed the crap out of him. Like he would turn it off and shut down and all that stuff. And I'm like, what's up with this dude? Finally, he shared what those things were. And I was able to correct that behavior because it wasn't something that I needed to do. It's just, it was my personality. That's the way I've done it with everybody else, right? Nobody else had an issue with these things, but he did. But the only way I was able to correct that information or behavior is he had to share it with me because I ain't no mind reader. Once he shared those things with me, correct it. It don't take nothing but not to do those things because it's not something that I needed to do. It was just because that's that's who I am. Like, I can do those things. I can say those things, whatever whatever they were. Don't matter what they were. But you'll never know how to correct the behavior or the person will never know how to correct, 
correct the behavior if you don't share those things with them. Oh, this one was a bit lengthy, which uh, some of my videos have been lengthy this time. And and uh, it, it's okay because y'all y'all have given me the questions and I'm giving you guys the answers. I always want to be thorough in my answers and I don't want to cut it off just because the video is getting lengthy. Um, love you guys. Obviously, I will see you guys tomorrow. And do not forget to give me thumbs up if this is absolutely a video that you would love to see. Share it with your friends. And of course, finally, if this is your very first time here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because there's so many more videos to come.